This is the player's guide for the GURPS Game Aid for Foundry. To get connected, type in the URL provided by your GM into the browser. The GURPS Game Aid really only works with Google Chrome, so use that. Once you're connected, select your player name from the list. It should already be there, and type in any password as the access key if necessary. If this is your first time connecting, you'll be presented with the player configuration dialog. Here you can select your player color, and this is used by Foundry to draw various elements on the screen, and you'll be provided with all the characters that the GM has assigned to you. Select your primary character and save your configuration. You may see the game paused icon. This means the GM has paused the game and you're not allowed to move tokens. You can still move the map around, Hold down the right mouse button to pan, or you can use the wheel to zoom in and out. To view your character sheet, you can either bring up the Actor tab on the top right here and click on your character's name, or if the token is displayed on the map, you can double click on the token. This will bring up your character sheet. If you're familiar with GCS, GURPS character sheet, then you should recognize this right away. If not, here's a quick overview. The top of the sheet contains miscellaneous character information. On the left hand side here are the GURPS attributes. In the middle we have hit points and fatigue trackers and other resource trackers. Then you have your hit locations and the damage resistance for each location. Then your encumbrance which determines your move and dodge, lifting information. Then you have your melee attacks listed and ranged attacks. And then you have your list of advantages, disadvantages, perks, and quirks. On the right are your list of skills. If you had spells, they would be listed here. Then you have your carried equipment, other equipment, and then any character notes you might have. If your character sheet is large like this one, there'll be a tiny little scroll bar on the right, which you can use to scroll the sheet up and down. Or you can just use your scroll wheel. Most of the items displayed in yellow are rollable. If you mouse over them, they'll change into a button that you can click on. And you will roll that attribute and get the results in the chat window. So I'll click on Strength. And in the chat window, we see the result of Bog rolling against his strength. As you look over the character sheet, you'll see a lot of things in yellow. Basically, if it turns into a button, it's something that you can roll. So I can roll against the dodge, or I can roll against this weapon attack. I can roll this damage. I can even roll text inside of descriptions. This button right here will roll 1d-3 with a minimum of 1. and This is used for first aid healing at tech level 3. So just remember, if it's yellow and you mouse over it and it turns into a button, then you can click it and roll it. There are other areas of the character sheet that are highlighted in orange. These two will turn into buttons, but they don't roll dice. These actually create modifiers to the next dice roll. The basic GURPS process is to take a target number, add or subtract modifiers to it, then roll 3d6 to see if you can get to that number or less. And if you do, you've succeeded. To do this in our game aid, you must first add all the modifiers, and then you roll the skill. For example, let's say Bog wants to chop somebody's head off. He's aiming for the neck, so we'll click on the neck modifier. And you can see this modifier added into the modifier bucket at the bottom of the screen, the red square. And now he'll roll the two-handed great axe attack. And in the chat log, you can see the attack, the modifier, the new target, and whether or not it was a success. GURPS has a lot of modifiers, and only a small fraction are displayed on the character sheet. More are displayed in the modifier tooltip. If you mouse over the modifier bucket, a tooltip will appear. In here are many positive and negative modifiers that you could apply to your next role. There are also pull-down menus here that have even more. If you add a modifier to the list, it will display on the bottom left here. If this modifier is incorrect, you can click on it and it'll go away. If you add multiple modifiers, 
The modifiers are totaled and the sum appears in the modifier bucket. This is a tooltip, so it'll disappear if you mouse away from it and reappear if you mouse over the modifier bucket. And finally, you can clear all modifiers by clicking on this trash can icon. During the course of the game, you're going to have to keep track of some resources. By default, we know how to keep track of hit points and fatigue. Use the minus button to remove some hit points and the plus button to add some and this button to reset it back to its starting value. If you cross one of the boundaries, the status will change color and show you basically where you're at. If you mouse over the status area, it will show you the various boundaries. Fatigue has different boundaries, of course. And now I'll click the reset button and bring him back to full health. We also have the ability to track four other numbers. You can see down here I have 12 magic beans and three other numbers I am currently not using. Although if you need to record something temporarily, these still record numbers. They're just not highlighted because they don't have a name. To give it a name and to define it, you can click on the pencil icon and then type in a resource name. For example, arrows. I picked up five. I have a maximum of five and I'm done. And you can see it displays in black instead of gray. Let me show you a few more things and you'll be ready to play. Here on the right is your encumbrance, and this value, your move and your dodge, are calculated by the character creation tool used by your GM. However, during your gameplay, your GM might tell you that your encumbrance has changed. You've picked up some heavy load. To change your encumbrance in the game, just click on it in the character sheet and it will change, and this becomes your new move and your new dodge value. Further down on your character sheet, you might see things that look like links. If your GM has set up their system correctly, you can click this link and it will open the PDF to that page so you could read about your advantage or skill. And finally, you can reorder some of the lists on your character sheet, the advantages, the skills, the spells, the equipment. The order of these lists is generated by the character creation tool, but maybe you want them in a different order. Let's say you like to use first aid a lot and you would prefer it to be at the top of the list instead of in the middle. Well, you can click and drag on the name, move it to the top, and it will reorder. Now you can double click on any of the header bars and it will bring up a question whether or not you want to sort by ascending or descending value. So you can do that. And then finally, with equipment, you have carried equipment and other equipment. If you wish to transfer between the two, drag and drop on the other header, and it will put it in the other list. Equipment's a little different, though. Things can be carried, so I might want to put this balance throwing axe inside of this pouch. So if I drag it onto the pouch and let go, it'll ask me, do I want to add it before this? or into this, and in this case we want to add it into the pouch. It obviously is a rather large pouch. Sadly, the changes you make to the orders of these lists only affect this local character sheet. If your GM re-imports this character, which they will, then the lists will go back to their original order. And one of the last features I want to show you is we offer a combat view character sheet. If you click on this button in the title bar, you'll see a smaller character sheet that's just focused on the combat attributes. You can switch between the two as many times as you like. Just click on the title bar button and it'll change. Now in Foundry, you can also collapse the whole character sheet by clicking on the title bar. So I might move Bog's character sheet over here and just double click on the title bar and it disappears. Double click again and it reappears. And that is the basics of using our character sheet. But that's not all. The GM may actually send out a chat message, and if there's some yellow text and you can mouse over it and it turns into a button, then you can click it. In this case, they're asking us to roll perception, and this will roll perception against your current character. And sometimes your GM may just want you to roll 3d6. So we have a 3d6 button at the bottom of the screen. If you left click it, you roll 3d6. If you right click it, you roll a d6. And that's it. That should get you started playing GURPS in Foundry. I hope you enjoy the game aid, 
and as always, thank you for watching.